Hi guys, this is the first comparative studies screencast. As part of comparative studies, you will need to have background knowledge on the UK in order to compare Australia and the USA. And part of this is having knowledge of the history of the UK and how sports were developed uh, and given to the world by the UK and how this compares to the history of the other two countries. So this screencast will just quickly give you an overview of the historical determinants for the United Kingdom. Okay, central to the United Kingdom is this concept of the British Empire. And the British Empire essentially started in 1492 and basically we decided to colonise other areas of the world and was an aggressive expansion policy. So we wanted uh, more trade, we wanted to own other countries. Canada was the first country occupied in 1492, but there are other countries such as uh, Northeast America, parts of South America, uh, parts of Africa, Egypt, India, Oceania, so Australia and New Zealand, and also South Africa. At its greatest point, it was the largest living army in history, and ultimately ended in 1997 when the Queen released Hong Kong to the people and became its own independent republic. The key point about the British Empire and why it was so important to the UK was the fact that it helped promote sport and our traditions across the globe. Um, by creating and colonising all these different countries, we had a massive impact upon their traditions by giving them ours. Um, for example, if, if schoolboys in England were playing hockey and the military at the time were also playing hockey and we travelled to India, we would be playing hockey against local Indians because we enjoyed it so much and the Indians would then take on that tradition of playing hockey and take it for their own. So it helped spread sport very quickly around the world and also um, concepts of our local and national traditions. Prior to having sport to give to the world, we actually created the majority of these sports and these were done through the public schools in the late 19th century. In this period, in this condensed period, lots of sports were created and also the governing bodies and leagues were also uh, created and formed. It happened in pretty much three sort of stages, sport. Uh, you had a popular recreation stage, so to start with, these public schools became more expansive. They were introducing more children to public school. And what happened was, children who were in preparatory school, which is effectively primary school back then, um, before they went to public school, they played their own sort of little games, if you like. Um, not necessarily sport, but, but sort of creative games within different regions of the country and for example there might be children from the northeast or the southwest and the southeast and from London and they would all come together to meet at public school and these ideas came together as what we call a melting pot whereas you had lots of different ideas and then people squabbling as to which rules were best so it could be if they were playing a game of mob football it could in the southwest they'd play it with 11 players whereas in the northeast they'd play it with 40 players and the children would argue over these rules and all the the rules would be thrown into this melting pot and out came a sort of unification of a rule as to how to play that game and effectively created a sport the second stage of sport development was what we call social control. So this is where the teachers of the public schools saw these games happening within uh, the school and, and after school time. And the games became quite thuggish and sort of violent behaviour was quite common. And they thought that perhaps sport or the creation of sport could help control this. And they started to collectively unify rules and impose that sport had to be used within school time and the idea was to create a tiredness effect on the children so they wouldn't have any time out of school to be mischievous or to, to be aggressive to any, anybody else within the society. 
and it was designed to create stability within the local society and the public school place so they had into house games they had sport as much as possible um, and a, a chap called Dr Arnold devised this idea of muscular Christianity so also to be a good Christian you had to have a healthy body to go with your healthy mind and healthy soul the third stage was this cult of athleticism so we've gone from sort of melting pot of games in popular recreation some form of control and, and starting to create some sort of rules in order to form good behavior and then you have the cult of athleticism so it's this idea of, of the values of physical effort sportsmanship truthfulness all coming together to become what they call what they deemed an, an athlete and also in this period you had ex schoolboys who, who finished public school but they still wanted to continue sport so they created their own clubs uh, be it if they went on to become factory workers or teachers or become members of the clergy or be go into the military they then continued to play sport so sport started to grow and evolve and friendly games would become between them and more clubs would be introduced to the local areas this then developed further because then you had a codification of sport so final set rules were put in place national governing bodies were formed and league structures were organized for these sports out of the old boy network of public schools so some good examples here so mob football at the top uh, Eton wall game is still a game that's played today I do believe by the public school of Eton and rugby was another game to come out of this this century Added to the public school boy and British Empire history of the UK was this notion of amateurism versus professionalism. Now, amateurism is a really important concept to understand in British society. And it's this idea of putting in the maximum amount of effort, but being fair at the same time. The UK is very famous for having values of putting in lots of effort, well done, bravo, and being kind to your opponents, picking them up, shaking the hands, fair play is the concept we gave to the world. This idea of amateurism was strongly linked to the upper or middle class and if you were a gentleman in this period of time you would never ever compete for some sort of reward or payment. A gentleman would always be the amateur, a professional would always be the working class because they're getting paid to do something and it helped associate society in terms of upper middle and lower classes with sport so working class would be associated with football hooliganism professionalism whereas the upper class would be lawn tennis elements of cricket fair play putting in lots of effort lots of leisure time good example of this would be in cricket for example the gentleman or the amateur would always be the batsman they would have their own changing rooms they would be the batsman as they have lots of leisure time they, they don't want to run too much they'd just be striking balls between the wicket and the professional the working class individual will be the bowler or the field fieldsman in the fact they were running around getting hot doing all the labor and again as mentioned before the amateur would have his own separate changing room and the professional or working class individual would have their own change room, they'd never get changed in the same area. Professionalism took on a concept as sports developed. Um, the Rugby League Northern Union formed in 1895, which is a breakaway league, which helped pay working class individuals for time off work to play rugby, rugby league. The Football League was founded in 1888 and that developed again working class citizens who wanted to play football taking time off work they had to be paid for that and so they became professionals and cricket a little bit later in 1890. Rugby Union was the only one of the major four sports in this country that remained amateur until the 1991 World Cup and indeed if you became professional before that time it was very frowned upon as it was a middle to upper class sport and this ethos of becoming a gentleman fair play uh, a yobs game played by a gentleman 
was very much the norm and still is a little bit in rugby union sort of an upper to middle class sport so again just some images of those sports there okay as a brief overview of the uk history we're going to go through some of this in in class as well um, but please make good notes about this is really important to the values and uk beliefs to compare with other countries and as i say any problems just come see us in the office